Let's talk Kenny Minchie, Elite 11. You laid your eyes on him. And before I let you go and explain to LL Nation and all the Fighting Irish fans why you love this kid so much, let's just talk about the timeline of the commitment. Notre Dame reached out sometime late September. He was already committed to Pitt. Just a young man that wanted to stick to his word and stick to his commitment. His family loves Notre Dame. Mm. There's a connection to Golden Tate mm. with his family. Mm. Not just because they came from the same high school in Henderson, Tennessee, Hendersonville, Tennessee. But there's a connection to the family. Mom, dad love Notre Dame. Notre Dame was a dream school for them. Notre Dame was kind of late to the party as far as recruiting him. You understand why? Dante Moore, he decommits, they move on. Because they felt like Kenny Minchie was so tied into his commitment, it was really between him and Austin Novosad. They went after the Austin Novosad and brought him in for a visit. Austin Novosad decided to stick with his commitment to Baylor. Now there's news that Austin Novosad still might be looking to possibly flip, which is hilarious. Hilarious. But that just lets you know, like, when something is for you, bro, it's for you. It's for you. Yeah. So Kenny Minchie, he goes on, he gets injured early in the season. He injures his shoulder, nothing structural, everything's fine. And he comes back, I think he plays like a total of five games in his senior season. And we're going to get to his senior film, which if you thought his junior film was something when Malik broke it down, wait until you hear Malik talk about his senior film in a few moments. So... We go through the season, and you basically have Notre Dame on in their household each and every week. So imagine that you're a pick commit. Your household is full of Notre Dame fans. The Notre Dame game is on each and every week, and it's tugging at your heart. It's tugging at your heart. Like Even though you know, man, I committed to Pitt. I committed to Coach Narduzzi. I'm locked in. I've been up there multiple times for game day visits. I'm an early enrollee. I'm the head of this class. I'm the face of this class. By the way, he was the only four-star in that class, bro. The only four-star in that class. And it just kept pulling on him. And I truly believe things started to turn. And this is why we say in recruiting, there's nothing more important than recruiting. You can call. You can text. You can, you know, talk sweet to the mom. You can sell the dad there's nothing better in recruiting than the product you put on the field and i fully believe the product that notre dame has been able to put on the field with syracuse and clemson move things in a direction to where kenny minchie started to listen to his heart more than his head because his head was telling the man stick to your word his heart the entire time was telling him, man, I love Notre Dame. And this was the tug of war that was going on with the young man. He reached out to Notre Dame. Now, this is the killer part. He made contact with Notre Dame. Which we do, We which we said that people, you said it, I've said it. What did we say? They watching the TV, like, maybe I should call those guys and check in how they doing. And you said it last week. Yeah. You said it last week, bro. You said there is no better house on the market than the Notre Dame quarterback room. You said it's, it's on a beachfront. Yes. And it's going for low. It's, it's almost section eight. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go that low. I, I can't rock with that. Come on, we talking Notre Dame. No. Ah! No. 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 
not on the beachfront. There is no way yeah, they didn't beach stay right. on the beachfront. What beachfront is this? Right in, right in uh, Palos Verdes. Nice. Oh, I thought you were gonna say something like Indiana Dunes or something. All right, <laughs> how are you gonna be in Palos Verde on the on the beachfront talk? Man, stop playing. All right, I go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. I just can't rock with that section eight. Go ahead, love. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but we we mentioned it. We said that just be the way we played Clemson and seeing that offensive line, and and even beyond that, the potential of what the guys can can bring as the skill position with a great running game. It's, it's pre-Alabama uh, with McElroy. And when they had McElroy, they had a great running game, great defense, great O-line. They were just missing that next level piece. And once they got that next level quarterback change, they became the dynasty that they became uh, in, the, uh, in, in winning the championships that they did. So uh, I'm, I'm not surprised, even though it's a rare – uh, occurrence in college football that a top traditional program is open to calls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when when's the last time they were fielding calls for recruits to be like, hey, uh, I'd like to try out, take a stab at it. You know, I mean, I'm still over here available. Uh, I could be a free agent for you. So I think it uh, shows where where we're headed and. Uh, in, in, in addressing the situation and Marcus Freeman isn't shying away from it. So I know he's still on the forefront of recruiting and he ain't forgot that we had some recruiting losses at that position in the 23 class. And I know he wants to seal it with a great, uh, a great finish to the class as well. Lucky Lefty podcast. We are discussing the new commitment of 6'3", 205 pound quarterback in the 2023 class out of Hendersonville, Tennessee, Pope John Paul II High School. Now, it, it, just the fact he goes to Pope John Paul II High School, along with the fact that the last player to come from there ended up being pretty good for Notre Dame. His name was Golden Tate. You might have heard of him. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. So that pipeline of success, yeah, we might want to try it again. He's the decommit from the pit program and now he'll be visiting Notre Dame this upcoming Saturday on senior day tons of pageantry tons of emotion should be a great show to Notre Dame Chad Bowden and the rest of the staff they'll have the opportunity and I can tell you this already Drake Bowen reached out to me when the rumors I was literally doing a show on IB and Drake Bowen reached out to me and was like, yo, is he good? <laughs> is he? And then, true story. True story. He said, is he good? I said, yeah. And I sent him the link. I sent him the link to your breakdown. And I said, he watched him. Malik watched him at Elite 11. And he loves the kid. Guess what the next question from Drake Bowen was? What was the next question? How tall is he? Yep, yep. Like even the, even the recruits, Drake was like, "How tall is he though?" Yeah, is he is he got some height? <laughs> so I was like, him. "Look, when you see him Saturday, you'll be eye to eye with him." Yeah, when you see him Saturday, I was surprised how tall he was. Like he 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 tall now. He, I was like, "Oh, okay, what's up, Mister Minchie? All right." Yeah. So it is. It is. As dire straits as the quarterback situation in the 2023 class were two weeks ago, for everything to happen as quickly as it did, because once Kenny Minchie made the phone call to Notre Dame to inquire if there was still interest, <laughs> they man. When I tell you Tommy Reese, Chad Bowden, they all did their due diligence to move quickly. And everybody, everybody was on board. Everybody was on the board, on board, and they worked on their end. And then after working on their end, they allowed this young man to go ahead 
and do what he needed to do to alert the pit program. And I think officially the pit program uh, was alerted late Saturday night, early Sunday morning mm -hmm. that he was decommitting. Because of new developments. So we talk about Notre Dame and the quarterback situation. Malik, you said it perfectly last week when you said, look, if you are a quarterback that is looking to decommit or possibly has yet to commit in the 23 class, tell me a situation that's better than the Notre Dame quarterback situation. Yeah. You said it. You said with this offensive line, the running backs, the wide receivers coming in, tell me a situation that's better if you're a quarterback looking to decommit or commit if you're a quarterback in the transfer portal eventually tell me a better situation than Notre Dame and you were right and I think the product of Syracuse the product of the Clemson game I think that really turned the tide for Kenny Minchie and I think he started to be able to see it on the field like I can win a national championship there I don't know if he I know he probably didn't really feel that. Maybe he felt like he could win an ACC championship at Pitt. But he didn't get the feeling that he could win a national championship at Pitt. If he watched that Clemson game, he got a glimpse of it and probably said to himself, yo, I know the receivers they have coming in. I know the running backs they have coming in. I see the offensive line. The two tackles are there. For another year at least, I can go make this happen. Because I'm telling you now, he's not coming here to sit. He's not coming here to sit. He might sit, but he's not coming in with the mentality. Oh, I'm coming. To, he's coming to compete. He's an early enrollee. He's definitely academically qualified. Admissions is pretty much, they went through all of that process. So Saturday, hopefully, he locks in and Notre Dame will have their quarterback. And this is a situation where, Left, I'll read this for you. And because we pointed this out, this is very important, right? Because we, we always talk about how we don't like these posts on uh Social media, when guys decommit, we feel like, look, if you call the coach, you're good. You don't have to say anything to anybody else. But this was his, his uh, decommitment post yesterday. I want to thank Coach Narduzzi, Coach Signetti, Coach DiBiaso, and the rest of the coaching staff at Pitt for believing in me and providing me with an opportunity to play college football. After prayer and conversations with my family, I have decided to decommit from the University of Pittsburgh. Thank you to everyone who has helped and su supported me through this hard decision. Kay Minchie. You, you know what's missing from that? What? He didn't, say, he didn't say my recruitment is open. He didn't say my recruitment is now open. He, he said uh, it's not going there no more. He didn't say I, I'm, I'm out there venturing for new prospects right he didn't say he didn't say he didn't say i'm open for new recruitment yeah he just said hey thanks for the shot dot 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 i'm on the big and better things yeah i think i've taken that step into the into the into the the paradise the land yeah. of the land of the milk and honey yeah so if you're going to be at the game this weekend notre dame fans be on your best behavior because honestly, the only thing that can happen is that something catastrophic happens to ruin this. Because this should be Kenny Minchie putting the crown on the 2023 recruiting class. Kenny Minchie should be the piece that truly takes this recruiting class to an historic level at Notre Dame. Yeah, we're talking about historic, and I think it's going to be Really good to see uh, a class finish at the right time at the end of the season, seal it up with a nice quarterback. 
maybe throwing Pemba in there if that uh you know he sees the trajectory of where we're going. But I think this is the right move. Like you said, some things are meant for some guys, and I think the way the cards fell were the right way to secure uh, a quarterback in the way we're going to do it, and it's going to be perfect for it. Yeah, speaking of that, and Pemba did put out his final four teams yesterday. Notre Dame did not make the list. We pretty much knew that that was trending that way. No worries. We'll get to two other recruits that have set dates and also put Notre Dame in their top 10. We had two guys from the 24 class, and then we had one young gentleman from North Oconee, Georgia, who was recently at the Clemson game that set a date that's about two weeks away to decide between Clemson, Notre Dame, and Oklahoma. We'll talk about that shortly. So sticking to Kenny mentioned, ultimately he makes a call, things are fast track. He goes ahead, he decommits this weekend, and now he's headed to Notre Dame. And he's not committed right now, but if I were a betting man, I would go to Vegas and lay the bet that the commitment takes place soon. Because I don't think he's, I don't think he decommitted to look at other schools. He decommitted for Notre Dame. That's right. He didn't decommit. Once again, he made the call. You have to put all of the pieces together. He made the call to inquire. Are you guys still interested? I'm thinking about this. They worked together to get things on track. They set up the visit. He's visiting. He decommits. He did not decommit to look at other schools. He decommitted because Notre Dame wanted him. That's right. So I know a lot of people are like, well, he didn't commit. Once again, he decommitted from Pitt because Notre Dame said they wanted him. And that's why he decommitted. That's right. It's as simple as that. Lucky Lefty Podcast. Left, I'm ready to lose you, bro. I already know. I already know you're super excited to talk about the 6'3", 205-pound quarterback from Hendersonville. Let's get to it. I love his tape. First thing you got to you gotta notice, first thing you got to notice is his size. Love the size, and I love the fact that he's interested in Notre Dame. And a lot of what I appreciate about this kid and what I see already that he plays at his own pace. And that's something that you find is really rare. A guy that can play at his own pace where he looks like he nothing, nothing is affecting him no matter what the front looks like. He's going to take his nice drop, find his little space, and deliver the football. This is not a running highlight type of thing where the guy looks erratic. He looks like he's trying to play, make, find things to do, find space to find time. He's directed and intentional in his movement in the pocket. And it's at his own pace. He's not rushed by a guy in his face, please. He's like, let me excuse me one second. Let me just go in there and find the window. And the best thing about it is that his touch pass, I have to bring it up. That's his best quality. To have touch pass gives the receivers chance to get yards after the catch, which is the most important thing when you have a bunch of skilled players that are elite at your position. They're going to love this quarterback. I would love – I used to love playing the, for the fact that if I had touch pass with a Will Fuller, touch pass with a guy like Jaden Thomas or Braden Lindsey or Tobias Merriweather, these are plays that are 30-yard plays that turn into touchdowns. You got to cut off the highlight because the guy's running after. You're not looking for the run. You're looking for the just to throw in the catch. But guys are making plays after the catch because he's able to be on time. The other thing he has is a quick release. A quick release is important because he can fit balls in late and he can fit balls in with anticipation and he's able to add great touch when he can get the ball while being hit as well as dropping on the money. So 
for a kid to be as active and calm as he is in the pocket, that's an attractive quality for a big time B1 quarterback because if he's at this pace now, it's not going to change when he's getting in front of 6'6 six, six mm-hmm. linemen and SEC D linemen and, and therefore after. I think the pace is what stands out the most, which makes you most game ready because he's going to be able to learn the system that he's in and the ability to have to put the ball wherever he wants. Like you have to question if he has a deep arm or not. Does he have a strong arm? It doesn't matter because the touch. Touch is there. And when you have the touch, you can make any throw in the book and you can give your guys chances when you need it the most. I mean, he's making throws off the back foot. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous because he's able to trust himself, throw it in the back of the end zone where not only the receiver can't go any deeper, but you got three guys in there looking to make a play and he's making plays all over the place with confidence and, <laughs> and accuracy. And you got guys putting the ball. It looks like Aaron Rodgers ass. It's like the guys look covered, but they're not covered because the perfect ball beats the perfect defense every time. Kenny Mitch, he's got arm strength, accuracy, pace, and a lot of touch. The RPO, he makes it look easy. His footwork is simple. It doesn't look like he's erratic, like he's Dak Prescott in it out there or Josh Allen out there. He's making the pass catch look very easily. And, and what's also important is how this fits in into our offense. A lot of what we do in the run game is important. But if you can get back there and, and be on second down and third down and do stuff like this, just drop it in the hole, make it easy for guys to play football with you and around you, you're going to start to see a dynamic offense on all levels. On all levels, you're going to see guys that are high, making highlights at, 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 as veterans and guys that coming in on day one as freshmen and making plays that stand out. I think he's a guy that can make everybody better on an offense, be a great compliment, and not have to be – the main ingredient. He doesn't have to be the Jameis Winston of the team to get the team to the championship. He just needs the talent that we already have, and that's going to be a dangerous mix in stopping uh, what we can do on offense. This is a a 40-plus point quarterback that we can add to an offense that's already dynamic and it's just missing one or two pieces. Here's a great question from Rob Tidoff that I'm not sure anybody else that talks Notre Dame football can answer. Besides, this dude has seen him up close and personal. Rob Tidall says, is he 6'1 or 6'3? Some publications have him at 6'1, some have him at 6'3. He's taller than me. So I'm I'm exactly six feet tall. Like exactly. Can't miss it. And he's the type of kid you'll you'll see him, you'll be like, oh, we eye level, but then you'll see him again. He's like, oh, he. He a little taller than me. And then if you put his cleats on, you go, oh, this dude is like 6'5". <laughs> so he's one of the guys where I'll probably be – he's 6'1 one, one week. He plays big. He's 6'3 the next week. So he's taller than me, and I know I'm six feet. So there you go. Yeah. So let's just split the difference and say 6'2". Yeah. Look, no, I, no I was six on the bigger side, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, he's like forehead bigger than me. Gotcha. So, Okay, so you're talking about 6'3", 205 yeah. pounds. That's great to know. So once again, that's the breakdown of Kenny Minchie's film brought to you by Anora Whiskey, AnoraWhiskey.com, that premium American whiskey, AnoraWhiskey.com. Left, you, you start to tease it a little bit, but maybe you can go into it. I'll, I'll set it up. You were at the Elite 11. You get back. And you call me. And I'm thinking you're about to tell me about Dante. And the first thing you said to me was, forget Jackson Arnold. Forget Dante. It's this dude named Kenny (laughs) Minchie. I remember because I thought he was Dante at first. Remember I told you? Because of the hair. Because of the hair. But I was like, he he bigger than Dante. And then, he, and then he knew who I was. And I was like, oh, what's up? And then he was a real good dude, real uh, – you could tell he knew what was going on. Like, he he wasn't like a kid that was just like, wow, I'm at the Elite 11. He was a kid that was like, okay, I heard about you. I know about you. I looked at you, whatever, like, real knowledgeable type of kid. And he definitely stood out personality-wise. I think sometimes you can tell a dude from a dude just on how they, you know, approach the field and go about – you know, mixing amongst other dudes, you know, yeah. you could be a dude amongst dudes and you could stand out. I think that stood out to me because I was like, okay, you know, I was looking for Dante the whole time, but he just stood out amongst, that's why I called you, which is crazy. And then uh, 
watching him throw, you could just tell a guy that's in control and knows his own ability. I think a lot of times guys are always on that, oh, he has so much potential. I think Kenny understands himself from an athlete perspective. Like he, I don't, I wouldn't say he's a, a burner, but he's got the athleticism of a Bryce Young or a Russell Wilson where you know, he'll get out of some, you know, some stuff. And he might scramble like a Patrick Mahomes. And you'd be like, how is he running for like all these yards? He ain't fast, but he can get he can get places. And so I think that's the perfect athleticism when you combine that with a really, really talented arm, something you can't really teach. That's the type of quarterback that wins a lot of football games because he gives you just enough of uh, everything you need. And then you put players with him. I mean, you're going to start seeing a, a, a dynamic offense that Tommy is going to grow with and evolve with because the, ch the chains and the cuffs on the offense is not going to be limited. You're going to see more than just Michael Mayer uh, do his thing. So I do believe that uh, he has that that special kind of feel to him, uh, even more so than Dante. I thought Dante was great at the Elite 11. I mean, he did a lot of great things, but even I told you about the rankings, like Kenny was in the top 10 the whole time, uh, was always competing and, you know, surviving at that spot. He just was going to Pittsburgh. So people really didn't know, but from a, a all around perspective, I really like where he's at from a head space and his talent is, and especially from uh, that film, you can tell he can do a lot of special things with the football outside of just being accurate. And that's next level stuff that we need. You know, we got guys that are uh, deep threats, but also possession guys, but also guys that uh, can do a lot of work if they catch it at five and turn it to 15, 20. So this is a kid that can give you all of those options and know how to survive a play without, you know, less Ian Book playmaking ability where he's going to run sideline to sideline. He's going to be more playmaking within the pocket, throwing some crazy dimes that you're going to ooh and ah about which is what, you know, we really be wanting that Notre Dame. Yeah, here's a question from Never Lost Runner, which goes to the next thing you told me on that particular phone call. And I was like, yo, did you just say that? You remember saying, yo, because I want to preface this, like you have a really good relationship with Dante going back a year now. And you talked about, Yo, I like Dante, don't get me wrong, but this dude might actually fit better with Tommy Reese. And I was like, what? Because at that point, I'm like, yo, Dante's like top three nation, five star. You're like, yeah, I love Dante, but this guy might be a better fit. And it goes to this question, who would you rather have, Dante or Kenny? Sure, I'd rather have both of them. Honestly, we can get two. You know, that'd be great. Um, obviously, Dante is at Oregon, so I would take Kenny. But I think like it just came at the right time. You know, I was sold on Dante. I didn't know it about Kenny until I met him at Elite Eleven, and always knew he was he could be good enough to come to Notre Dame. And once Dante decided to go to Oregon, it just I just knew who we should call after that, and it. For it to coincide in the way they, you know, made contact with uh, Notre Dame, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we all kind of see that how things are shaking out where guys are committing that this is a kid that can really, you know, be underratedly uh, a great pick and a great spot for him, especially with the QB room looks like now and, and even moving forward. So once again, four-star 2023 quarterback, Kenny mentioned Henderson Bill. Tennessee, Pope John Paul II High School that also produced former Notre Dame wide receiver Golden Tate. He decommits from Pitt. He'll be visiting for the Boston College game, senior day, all the pageantry. I'm sure the staff, headed by Chad Bowden, is going to do a fantastic job of giving this young man and his family the show that they need, everything they need to go ahead and pull the final trigger to put the crown on what was already considered a top three to top five recruiting class by Marcus Freeman and his staff in the class of 2023. Now you add that quarterback, it's time to rock and roll.
Uh, wow. 